so I was saying to him, this was carried out by a local man. I said, I, I said, I think the, the guards will have this wrapped up in a fortnight, Ian, because, uh, you know, look at it, it's, it's December. We're in a tiny lip of land down at the end of Ireland. There are no, there are no, you know, passing Frankensteins coming a lift to Dublin because there's no main road to Dublin. We're down the end of a peninsula. If you turn that upside down and you have a bag with 400 houses in it, half of them are empty because they're holiday homes. Uh, and then, you know, half the remainder are, are pensioners. So you're looking at somebody who's, Obviously, a powerful person because the victim was overkilled with fifty or more blows. He was rained with uh, blows after after she had died. Her head was virtually obliterated. So you're looking for a powerful man, aged twenty five to forty. And so I said to Ian, and he didn't say anything at the time. But I didn't have any suspicions either. I was looking at a powerful man, aged twenty five to forty. In fact, he was thirty nine at the time. He was the same age as Sophie. And uh, the scales only fell from my eyes, I have to say, when Ian Bailey was arrested on suspicion of the murder of Sophie Toscan Duplantier.